The word Lord means light. So when you hear me speak the word Lord, uh, you can interchange it with light. So for all of those that um, would like that shift, please do so and sing along. The important thing to remember with singing is that we are not just uh, praying through music. We are actually toning and healing ourselves through sound. So the cool part about this prayer is that it is a healing, it's a healing nugget for all of us. So take it in, let it do its good work, and feel free to sing along and feel that toning in your own body and the healing from this beautiful prayer. Here we go. Let's take a deep cleansing breath. Here I am, Lord, use me. Guide me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Is that not the calling of all of our hearts? Here I am, fill me, guide me, teach me, show me. Let your will be done as me. I am only here to represent you, sweet spirit. I know this is my purpose, my longing, my calling. So today we come together once again 
open, ready, willing. And when we are together, we support each other. We see each other. We know and we remember the truth of who we are. We are all here revealing God in our own unique and individual way. We simply need to create the conditions to be the opening, to allow the spirit to shine its light, its Lord through us. And so we give thanks. We give th thanks this day for the opportunity of being here. Even though it seems like we are separate, there is no separation in time and space. You can feel your energy, your vibration passes out through the universe and touches all those you come in contact with. So we give thanks from the heart. And so it is. Amen and amen. All the colors of the rainbow, all the voices of the wind, dream that reaches out, reaches out to find where love begins. Every word of every story, every star in every sky, every corner of creation lives to testify. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. Be a witness in the silence when words are not enough. With every breath I take, I'll give thanks to God of love for as long as I shall live. I will testify to love. From the mountains to the valleys, from the rivers to the sea Every hand that reaches out Reaches out to offer peace Every simple act of mercy Every step to kingdom come All the hope in every heart Will see what love has done as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. Be a witness in the silence when the words are not enough. With every breath I take, I give thanks to God of love. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. As I shall live, I will testify to love. Be a witness in the silence. Words are not enough. With every breath I take, give thanks to God of love. For as long as I shall live. For as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. Be a witness in the silence when the words are not enough. With every breath I take, I give thanks to God above, for as long as I shall live, I will testify to love. Thank you, Brian. Man, it wakes me right up. Love it. Thank you so, 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 so much. Let me see here. Give me one second. I'm going to mute you, Brian. Oh, I don't know how to get myself on the speaker's view. Why is it still on Brian? All right, whatever. Issue. Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you again so much, so much, so much for being with us. Hey there, Annie. So glad that you're here. So um, this is week number eight that we have been doing Healing Humanity Soul. And as I was preparing for the talk today, I was thinking about what happened, you know, eight weeks ago 
when we had uh, the, the collective experience that really, I mean, let's just say it like it is, our lives changed forever. Now, does that mean we're going to be quarantined forever? No, of course not. That's, that's not the experience that we're going to have. But, uh, but life is probably never good, you know, like 9-11, like never, things just changed uh, in, in our culture. It's really one of those altering experiences. And, and the phrase that came to me when, uh, when I was, you know, in that same space that we all were, like wanting to do something as a, as a spiritual teacher and a thought leader, I was like, what can I do? And the phrase just came to me, what's needed is healing humanity's soul. And so I haven't really addressed that like as an, as an actual talk title until this week. I guess it took me eight weeks to get confident with that notion. So the first question that it begs for me when I think about healing humanity's soul, I, I, I don't know, this is what came up for me, like, does humanity have a soul? <laughs> Right. So that was the first thing that I thought of. And, and, you know, the answer is, I don't know, right. We're all kind of just making this up as we go. But what, but what I came to is to, to me, if there, if there is a yes, if there is such a thing as, hold on, two people want to get admitted to. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Beth. All right. Sorry. Um, I'm moderating and also uh, doing the talk. So sorry, two people just wanted to get admitted and I want them here. So welcome Beth and Bonnie. So, so what came to me that I don't know if humanity has a soul, but if there is a soul of humanity, here's how it lives for me. And I'm curious what you guys think of this. I think what we call the collective consciousness of humanity, the oneness that our mind is, if there is a soul of humanity, I guess how I would relate to it is through this notion of the collective consciousness that you and I are. There's, there is, the, the, if you will, the sea, the ocean of consciousness that God is and that we are an, exp an individual expression of. You, you can take the, the bucket out of the ocean, but you pour it back in and we are just all a part of that oneness. So when I think about that, like, so healing humanity's soul, healing the collective consciousness of humanity, then my, my next question that I asked myself, given the one that came up with this doc title, was can humanity's soul, can collective consciousness need healing? Can it be sick? Can it possess illness? And what I thought of with that is, you know, again, I don't know, but how it lives for me is this. If you think about our, how, how does our consciousness express? To me, how our consciousness expresses is in the outer manifestations of our life as within, so without, as without, so within. So the expression of my life of my, my individual consciousness is the out picturing of my life. And the expression of humanity's consciousness is the out picturing of our world. And look what we've done as a collective consciousness. We've created this, this thing, this illness, this virus that has all of humanity now focused in, in one thing. And what is that one thing? healing. The one thing that humanity is focused on right now is healing. And as I think deeper about this, I have long said that the way that we're living and working isn't working. And we've continued to outpicture manifestations of that truth, that the way that we're living and working just isn't working when, when our national religion be, becomes capitalism and our collective spiritual practice is enhancing the bottom line when our oceans are suffocating with debris and plastic and polar bears are starving and longevity, uh, like human longevity is decreasing because of addiction and overdoses and suicides. Like, look guys, I'm not making this stuff up. When you look at what the manifestation and the outpicturing of the human soul is right now, all I can say is it's not working. So what's ours to do? We're all here committed to the healing of humanity's soul. I'm committed to that. I know you guys are as well, or you wouldn't be here. So if, if humanity's soul is the collective consciousness of, of, of all of us together, I think the best way to think about healing humanity's soul is to first of all, deeply connect with what is the purpose of the overall consciousness anyway? What is the purpose of humanity expressing through consciousness? And in my philosophy and my teaching and in the unity teaching, our purpose is to connect more fully with the divine. 
I say to grow in consciousness back to the divinity from which we came. That is our soul's expression. That's our soul's purpose. So in, in doing that, you have to start asking yourself, okay, great, that's my purpose, to collect, connect more fully with the divine, to, to grow in consciousness back to the divinity from which I came. And I like to say the best way of doing that is not to have your little 20 minutes of spiritual practice and say my 15 affirmations and then you know, what, three gratitudes or whatever. And I'm not making fun of that. It's all of that. But I say the best way to grow in consciousness back to the divinity from which you came is to make your life your spiritual practice. Make your life a living prayer. Make my life an expression of my devotion to God. That's the, that is the best way to fulfill your purpose. Spiritual practice can't be this thing you do over here. And then what do you you do in the other 23 and a half hours of the day, right? Look at what we're doing. That, look at what the outpicturing is in our worlds. And I am so committed to the unity philosophy because unity teaches us how to connect more fully. Use me, God. And, And use me, not only use me, I want to express as God. So how do you express your God self more fully? What we know from the unity tradition is that we have what we call the metaphysical trinity that teaches us exactly how to do this, the metaphysical trinity, mind, idea, and expression. So let's look at this a little bit. If that is how we express our purpose through mind, idea, and expression, our purpose being to grow in consciousness back to the divinity from which we came. Our purpose of being used by God. How am I used by God? Well, through the holy metaphysical trinity of mind, idea, and expression. Mind, not your little yama, 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 oh, I've got to do this, and I should have done that, and why aren't I a better mother, and there should be more money in the bank. Not that one. (laughs) That's your brain. That's your ego. That's what your neurology has done to be be shaped over over time by our culture, by your experiences. That's just your brain. Don't worry too much about that. Actually, what I like to teach is use your mind to train your brain. You have mind in your heart, meaning intelligence. You have mind that can observe what your brain is doing. Have you ever noticed that? When you're having that like yama, yama, yama thought, maybe an anxious thought, maybe like, oh crap, what's gonna happen? We're in a pandemic and is my income gonna be okay? And are my family gonna be okay? And then you have this, this moment, right? This observation of like, hey, that's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to be in fear. So, so mind is not the yama, yama, yama mind. It is the mind of God. It is your consciousness. It is your ability to be aware and observe what your brain is doing, what your neurology is doing. Don't worry so much about your neurology. Get really interested in what your mind is doing. Albert Einstein said, I want to know the mind of God. Everything else is just the details. And I think that's one of the most inspiring quotes for me because it it begs the question, what is the mind of God? That's how we grow in our purpose by starting to ask and connect with the mind of divinity, divine mind. When you connect with divine mind through making your life a living prayer, in community, in conversation, in uh, your spiritual practices, subjugating your ego in service of love, giving up your need to be right, giving up your momentary fears, worries, and concerns in the face of, of faith and love and truth. That is what's possible inside of making your life a living prayer, living your purpose. When you're connected with divine mind, what happens? You receive divine ideas. You get flooded with divine ideas of how you can help, how you can make a difference, how you can express in the world. That is how God is expressing on this planet. That's it. You don't have to go figure it out. You just have to pay attention. Where am I being called to serve? Where am I being called to love? Where am I being called to give and to do more? To do it all, to be loving. I mean, and it's every, it really is every single interaction, every single opportunity at every moment. 
you are called to love. Use me, God. I was on the phone with the cake lady today. My son Nathan turns 15 tomorrow. Some of you are about to fall off your chairs because you remember when I was standing up at Unity on the River with that old 18 year, 18 month old in my arms. Uh, the blessing of the children. He turns 15 tomorrow, so I'm on the phone with a cake lady, and she's, you know, telling me all, all, all of these concerns about her people don't want to come to work, and she doesn't have enough cake decorators, and, and, and all of this, and, and I was just like, you know, it, it's all good. You're providing such a beautiful service. You're making my family life so much better, and she just, you know, and I just loved on her, right? I just loved on her, but I'm so glad you're there, and you're doing, you have a skill that I don't have, and I just loved her, and then we went to get off the phone. She said, hey, you know, Hold on a second. She's. I just want to say to you, thank you so much for your kindness. That really made a difference for me today, right? So I'm, this is like the cake lady on the telephone. In every moment, what we're called to do is love. So you get that divine idea. There's so many divine ideas that we have all the time. That to like call so and so. Somebody shows up in your mind. Call them. Like do. Like I know it's old school. I didn't say text them. Call them. <laughs> this is a really great time to be connected with people. Divine mind opens up, will fill you with divine ideas of how to express, what to create, who to help, how to reach out. I just, I love this whole idea. Fill yourself. And then the third thing. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to go back a little bit. So the challenge that we're in right now with accessing divine mind is that when your mind, when your brain is stressed, you get flooded with stress hormones, right? And when you get flooded with stress hormones, what, ha what happens in your body is it shuts down the prefrontal cortex. And in the prefrontal cortex of, of your brain, that is your access to the states of awe and wonder and wisdom and transcendence and unconditional love. So one of the ways we can combat that now, we are in this global experience of that what some people are calling trauma, you know, la lack of control, lack of autonomy, uh, lack of our normal supports. So if you're feeling traumatized by this, don't make yourself wrong for it and be like, oh, that's not very spiritual. No, <laughs> I'm going to show you something really simple that you can do, like, like literally uh, like once an hour for a minute. I'm going to invite you to play along. So get your, get your computers ready. Get ready to type back to me. Go to the chat box. And I want for just one minute for us to focus on this question. What brings you awe? What sends you into that place of wonder? Like that place of, you know, that takes your breath away and inspiration. So just go ahead and, and type that. And, what, and while you're typing it, what I want you to do is pay attention to what's happening in your energy field. Nature, a rose, flowers, nature. Notice that? Uh, a night sky filled with stars. I love that. Notice, look at nature, nature, nature. Ocean, certain music, beautiful forests. Watching my child play in nature. Na look at this. Nature, nature, nature. What does that tell you? Do you oh, a child's belly laugh. I love that, Deb. Yeah. A gentle breeze, stars, love, the moon. Again, let's just keep going. What else? If you've already written, go ahead and add more. An inner smile, warm sun. Feel the energy now, guys. Feel the energy in your body. Feel the shift in just your etheric nature, your grandchildren, the ducks and their growing babies in the pond, synchronicities, smell of flowers. So notice that. Okay, come back here. Notice when you, when you flood yourself with these images, right? Like I can see the ducks in the pond. I can hear the belly laugh of the children. I can see Lynette with her grandchildren. I can see my son's face and the feel of my spouse's hand next to me. These are the things that fill us with awe and wonder. And when you spend just a moment, just one minute, Allowing, to, you, allowing your mind to be flooded with these feelings and these images, your brain shifts from the stress hormones to the love hormones, oxytocin and serotonin, and you're uh, immediately able to then open up to divine idea. That is how we fill ourselves with love. And it doesn't take anything. This is just a very simple thing to do. 
So then the question is, you're connected with divine mind, You've, you're flooded with divine ideas. Then the question next is, how are you going to be used by God in divine expression? And there's two ways I want you to think about this. A is, what are you going to do? And B, and this is what I want to focus on a little bit more, how are you speaking? How are you using the gift of communication right now? What's actually coming out of your mouth? If you want to know, if you want to pay attention to what your current level of consciousness is, pay attention to how you're speaking. Because how you speak reflects what you're noticing. And what you notice reflects the consciousness that you're seeing life with. So what I want us to do now is, again, just join together collectively. And I want us to lift each other up in the chat box again, sending messages of encouragement and love and support to one another. Let's use our, our ability to connect with divine mind and engage with divine ideas through divine expression to send love. Send love to each other, send love to the planet. Healing the soul of humanity starts with you and me. Bless all the healers on this call. Thank you, Dave. You are beautiful and worthy. I believe in all of us. We love each other. I'm so happy to see all of your faces. You can do it. Hugs, you are beautiful. And I wanna share with you, you are the light of God expressing. You are love. Everything you need will be provided. We love you. Be and see the light that you are. Love is everywhere. You are love. We got this. Grateful to all the wisdom that you bring. You all are my soul tribe and a huge part of my purpose for why I made it through this week. God's got us. Thank you for showing me your joy. Again, open up your heart chakra. Open up your heart center. We are in this together. How we heal humanity's soul is by being the God self that we are and bringing that into expression with each other. Not by listening to what the smallness of your ego mind will tell you. Not by listening to the fear, not by listening to the things that are going across the airwaves. By listening to the call of spirit rising within you as you. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Let us rise up together in love. Namaste. That was beautiful, Jackie. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I'm Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. The only 
only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. Ooh, oh, you see I am loved when I can't feel a thing. And you see I am strong when I think I am weak. And you see I am held when I have fallen short. Let's all take a deep collective breath and take in what we have just heard. You may recognize those voices in your mind that say you're not enough, never measure up. And then you call on the Lord. And then you find everything that's wrong and then you call on the Lord. Deep breath. What will call us to remember? What will call us to notice what we are saying to ourselves? What will call us within? We as humans, are expressions of God love. And we are here as a vehicle of that love. We are here to reveal that love. And when we go within and we take time to allow ourselves to be still, we will hear all those words. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I'm strong when I think I'm weak. You say I'm held when I'm falling short. It's all there for us. We simply need to open. We need to create the avenue, the channel, the opening, the conditions so that the spirit of the living gods can speak through us. When we feel we are falling short, when we're not enough, Who's talking? What aspect of yourself is speaking those things? And isn't there a higher place to move to? So we are going to go into the silence. I invite you to notice what your mind is saying to yourself. 
and then allow the Holy One to speak through you, to remind you of who you truly are, your divine essence, your divinity, the ones we are waiting for, you are strong, you are held, you are loved, you are beauty, you are magnificence. Can you allow yourself to hear those words? Open yourself to the light of the Holy One and be silent. Spirit, make of my life a living prayer. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. You are the truth of my being. I now create the opening and I ask myself as I go forth today, what is mine to do? How can I best reveal God as me? What words will I use in my life every day, in every moment, in every opportunity? I have so many opportunities to reveal God. I thank you, sweet spirit, for the strength and the will to do so. And so it is. Wow. I got nothing. That was just amazing. Uh, Elle, that was stunning. And Shipley, I could sit with you in meditation. Like, I, I think literally for the rest of my life. I might have to get up and eat every now and then, but... So thank you all for creating the space together. Uh, you know, Leslie, Brian, both of your songs are just beautiful. We're creating a vibration together, aren't we? So just send this out, you know, to the people in your lives. Just send this vibration out to the people who are working on the front lines, to your family, to your loved ones, to anyone who's sick, to anyone who's lost work. Just send this love out. That's what we're here to do. This is what healing humanity's soul looks like. Right here, this is what it looks like. Here we are, collectively. I'm so blessed and honored to be with each of you. So I wanna invite you now to share anything that's on your hearts. Um, I know it does feel a little bit of, gosh, what is there to say? Um, but let's open up our hearts. Yeah, Peter would love to hear from you. Go ahead, I unmuted you, you're good. Okay, good. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to share the news that I, uh, my house is under contract and is going to be sold. And I have signed a contract to buy a smaller house in Exeter. Congratulations. That's all, all moving forward. There's a lot involved, but it's all working well. 
Um, the other thing, if I could have just a minute and a half or two minutes, of course, Peter. I'd like to read a poem. I'd love to hear that. That'd be fantastic. And, um, you know, Peter, I just also want to acknowledge the book that you wrote, the book of poetry that you wrote, that's just so, so beautiful. And, uh, you know, feel free to follow up with me on working on a project together. Uh, actually, I just finished teaching five leadership programs. They're, they're done. So my calendar next week looks really different, Peter. So hey. <laughs> great week to grab me back on that project around your book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll follow up afterward. And what, Peter, what's the title of your poetry book? By Process of Illumination. By Process of Illumination. You guys can get it on Amazon. And I'm just so, so proud of Peter for putting that together. Lisa Polanzi's photography is on the cover. Just a beautiful book. So go ahead. So the only thing I would, would add to your, your beautiful talk today is that we are already one in spirit. It, there's no, we're not just parts. <laughs> there are no parts. There's only the whole. Yeah. There's only and, the whole. Uh, and there's no steps involved in getting there uh, except for realization, you know, realize. So, anyway, this poem, though, uh, follows uh, a specific form of poetry called a villanelle, uh, where two lines are repeated a lot. It's called Because of the Joy. I haven't but an inkling why we are outside in. I want to change our thinking. It's how the virus entered through separated minds. We haven't but an inkling. They'll think that it's my ego, not grim enough for them. They want to change my thinking. My world is now unspoken, a joy that could be ours. I have an outer twinkling. The world's been sick for ages, but we are really not. I want to change our thinking. How to pose the question what to include in self. I haven't but an inkling. I want to change our thinking. Mm. Beautiful. That's awesome, Peter. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Anyone else have anything you want to ask? Say, yeah, Nancy, I'd love to hear from you. Well, Peter's a very tough act to, vo to follow. <laughs> um, but I um, remember Shipley saying um, it only takes a 10 percent shift in consciousness to change the world and I think we're there and I'm really encouraged by that um, and today I um, volunteered my Subaru to drive um, um, food and toilet paper over to the Pettengill house that we collected at Unity on the River and um, I think we, we probably filled the trailer about a quarter full uh, you know it was just very heartening to see great Thank you for doing that, Nancy. You know, that's exactly what my talk was about, you know, just going out and being your God self on earth. And uh, that's you being the blessing. Thank you so much, Nancy, for sharing that with us. And thanks to Unity on the River for its continued support of our community. It's beautiful. Anybody else, anything you wanna say? I can't see everyone on the screen. So if you're raising your physical hand and I can't see you, just feel free to unmute yourself and speak up. I got one little thing. This is Dave. Hey, Dave. Um, so a lot of my friends are caregivers and their businesses have been closed, but they're facing reopening soon, which is a blessing. Um, I'm going to put a little link in the group chat in a second. Uh, so uh, I found it very helpful for letting me um, understand what situations are risky, what situations are not risky with regard to spreading the virus and some things uh, few of my people have already said have been helpful in terms of uh, understanding what environments they might need to create in their new in their workforce as, as they go back and it's also helped me uh, my inner stress level go down a bit so I hope to share that with all you awesome thank you so much Dave we appreciate that we're in this together <laughs> definitely uh, Janet oops got to unmute you honey can you unmute yourself I can't unmute you Prayers. There you go. I'm sorry. Could you start again? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you. Yep. Um, I would just like to ask for some prayers for my son, um, Elijah, who is going to be 14. 
and is just having a hard time with this pandemic um, from the remote learning that has to happen um, and the adjustment to that, um, to wearing a face mask, which he hasn't, is not always, uh, you know, consistent with. I don't think he really understands that it's not just like a kind of, a, you know, just because mom wants me to type of thing. It's like, this is really serious. Um, so just for pray for, you know, him to kind of get on board with the learning and get on board with wearing the mask, like always um, type of thing. Um, so pray for understanding. Absolutely. And for all of our young ones. Shipley, you want to help? Yeah. yeah. It's hard for them. Yeah. Shipley, uh, you're muted, Ship. Ship, 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 you're muted, huh? Oh, I was going to. Oh, uh, Meg, did you want to say something? Uh, oh, Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl. I see Meg also has her hand up. Um, Cheryl, yeah. Did you want to piggyback on what Janet said? Um, um, I, I think that prayers for all teenagers right yeah. now are needed. I have one at home too. <laughs> I, I see your Elijah and raise you by a Nathan. <laughs> it's so hard to say. Is it okay to bring in Nathan here? Yes, please. But, um, so, in, you know, I'm a nurse practitioner. So one of the things to, that might be helpful for them to understand is that he could get the virus and not really feel it, but for five days after that, when he's talking without a mask, spread it to other people. So that's why he needs to wear the mask. So it's not because he might get sick, it's because there's about five days where you spread the virus without feeling it, and that's kind of for everybody. Um, the other thing, um, David, in terms of like the, I, I have to look at your thing, but um, it stays in the air for, that's kind of debatable, but like two hours is what it's shown in the studies. So that sort of just means that when you're doing business and somebody happens to cough, it's the, it's the same stuff, you know, just wipe down the table. It's sort of the same stuff when, when um, H1N1 was around and we caught that earlier, so it really didn't come into our country as much, but in the beginning, all of a sudden, all you saw all these things with um, uh, hand sanitizers up front. Um, you know, so if we think of that mindset, that's where we should be now in terms of taking care of each other. That it doesn't have to be that big of a deal. It's just um, preventing that transmission. Oh, what a cutie. Thank you, Shep. Um, Thank you. Shipley, do you want to hop in and do some questions? Sure. Uh, let's... Just put a, a circle of light around all the young ones, especially the teenagers. I remember being a teenager, quite mm. rebellious. And let's, you know, we, we might not want to keep reminding them, um, you are the divine, you are the divine spirit, everything you do matters, everything, you know, you touch, your vibration is going out in the universe, but we can know it for them. And we can think these thoughts and hold that vibration for them and the truth of who they are that they can remember and that they can, you know, they're struggling so much. It must be just agonizing that they might find peace. This is so hard for them to contain themselves in this world that we're in now. And so I just see peace surrounding them, light surrounding them, divine inspiration going, moving through them so that they remember. And, um, and they love, they are there, they are here to love just, just as we are. They are love in expression. Bless you parents. Thank you, Shipley. <laughs> Thank you, Shipley. Uh, yeah, Denise? Everybody, great seeing you all. Great to see oh, you. Yeah, this is, this is wonderful. Um, you know, at first I was, of course, like all of us, fearful and trying to find my way through this. And I, I found myself getting very involved in watching the news and hooked into the, the, a vibration that was um, less than beneficial for me. And then I adopted this little doggy two weeks ago. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I'm going to do some great. And I've been wanting a dog and he's just so perfect. And this has turned out wonderfully. And he's been the biggest teacher when I think of healing the soul of humanity and how it begins with us. And when I got him, I realized he's had a story past that he hasn't told me yet because he doesn't know me well enough, he said. 
So at some point he will let me know <laughs> what his history is. But what I knew about him was he had a great deal of anxiety. And it was mirroring a lot of the anxiety that I was feeling. And I thought, you know, the best thing I could do for him would be to stay away from any and all things that bring me into that state. Mm -hmm. So I can raise my vibration in bonding with him to allow him to come and be um, more calm and, and present to our new relationship. And it was so powerful because I have yet to really go back and watch much of the, I know if something happens, I'll know, you know, but it, it's really been, he's been the most amazing teacher for me. And I think that's how we're gonna heal the soul of humanity is just inside, just yeah. our own willingness to what we allow our vibration to be subjected to. Right. And whether it's a little dog or whatever, we really, I always say, think about what you think about paying attention to what you're paying attention to is critical. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's, I think that's really all we need to do. I think things have gotten complicated and we need to simplify it. And right. I don't know how to do it better than that. It's beautiful. Thank you, Denise. Um, you know, one of the things I was thinking about when I was writing my talk for this week was, you know, what is the, what is the virus asking us to do, but to go within? Right? So physically, right? if we're the cells of the organism of humanity, we're being asked to go within, go within our homes. Uh, we're being asked to slow down. Uh, so the, the corrective action is being prescribed by the virus. Go within. And uh, that's our work. To What's his name? What would you say? What's his name? Oh, the dog. What's the dog's name, Denise? Pookie Betts. <laughs> oh, Pookie Betts. That's great. No, no, Mookie for, the, for all you Red Sox fans. Right, of course. Mookie. Mookie Betts. Well, Mookie Mookster, you know, he's going to have a ton of names. That's beautiful. Mookie Betts, how much? Uh, Paula, you got something? You know, can, can, if I go like this. Can yeah, you, I can see it. Yep. So yep. My, my good news is that um, a friend and I have a raised bed. And today was like, it was like a birth today. So I, I have one and she has one and, and we're making a little farm together because we don't have enough land here. So I get to be a little farmer. That's all, thank you. <laughs> all right, why don't we, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and then uh, we'll wrap up with some song and some prayer. Oops, sorry, hon. Uh, I can't hear you, Elle. No, I can't, you're not muted either. Sorry, my mic yeah, okay, thanks. Um, Hi, everybody. I just wanted to bring together two conversations because there's a thread that that was woven through here um, that I don't know if everybody picked up on. So Denise, you talked about how you've been able to help your your new pup with his anxiety by controlling your anxiety levels by what you're exposing yourself to what you're feeding your mind. I wanted to point out to all the parents out there with kids who are anxious, that we can do this to serve our children too. And it really works. Um, it's, it's one of the foundations of, of my parenting style. So I just wanted to point that out. Beautiful, thank you so much, appreciate it. All right, I don't wanna keep everybody on too long. It's five o'clock already. Meg, do you wanna sing us out? Oops, you're muted, honey. Can you unmute yourself? I tried to and I can't unmute you. Cute. There you go. There you go. You're good. Bless us all. What a what a joyful time. What a beautiful time to be together. And oh my gosh. And remember, remember the truth of our beingness. And I am the one. We are the ones uh, we are waiting for. The truth, the light, and the love is right here. So here we go. Sing with me, please. I am the one I am waiting for. <laughs> And aho means, and so it is, aho, 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 aho. I am the one I am waiting for, yes I am, aho. I am the one I am waiting for, yes I am, 
so much bless you go ahead more meg yes. the same in, in closing prayer ah we are the ones we are you are the ones we've been waiting for the sons and the daughters of the great i am and i close with the words of clarissa pencoliesti don't lose heart we were made for these times when a great ship is in harbor and moored it is safe, there is no doubt. But that's not what great ships were made for. That's not what you were made for. You are the sons and the daughters of the great I am. So go for it. Love you. God bless. <laughs> Thank you, Shipley. Thank you, Shipley. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very welcome, everybody. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being everybody. here. Yeah. Powerful. Thank you. Uh, Love you hi, all. Everybody. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Paula. Good. Thank you. Oh, look at thing. Everything. Flower. Uh, service was brought to you by the letter J. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, I love your new background. Thank you, Stephanie. It's actually a sheet. Yeah. It's a blue screen. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, is that your painting? Okay. I mean, wow. Thank you, everybody. Oh, I mean, you know, I've worked you. in You're very hospitals. I've worked at UPS. I mean, you know, I've worked for big companies, but not in an in executive or managerial capacity. Uh, How can we see the uh, recording again? Uh, I posted on my social media page, Annie, called the the Vibe Tribe. Okay. Are you are you on Facebook at all, Annie? 
No. Yeah, you can note though. I mean, Annie, it's, I can. Um, I put it up on. Yeah, it here. goes. Annie, it goes up on YouTube. Oh, and that's the part that I think. Um. So if so probably fun. by Saturday late afternoon yeah, or Sunday morning, if you go to YouTube and search on the <laughs> YouTube oh, bar, search Jackie Woodside Healing oh. Humanity Soul, you will find all of them. Yeah. It's on the YouTube page. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I love you. Thank so you so much. Those big orange and wavish ones. Leslie, Shipley, Brian, see you in a few minutes, okay? Yes. I right. never noticed that about you guys. Bye-bye. Uh, I'm going to log off, guys. When wow. I log off, everybody else goes yeah, to. Yeah, they like open up a wide like party. party. Hugs, hugs, hugs. Give a quick hug. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Hugged everybody. Kayla, love you. They've been kind of coming in phases, like the red and white Bye, ones. Everyone, I love you. Orange-ish ones. Too.